one of the things that I thought was fascinating that you looked at was uh, kissing, the use of human kissing. What's mm. what's the explanation for that? Uh, it it. It's one of those things, again, for which there has never been really a satisfactory explanation. Um, one of the interesting things about kissing, though, is in mouth-to-mouth -mouth kissing. I mean, not all cultures do it, so it doesn't necessarily work everywhere. But it, it seems that pretty much it, it's as close to a universal as <clears throat> anything uh, might be in that, you know, large numbers of cultures actually do it. The key to it is you're exchanging information on your essentially your immune system. So it, it's reckoned a, a, a five minute kiss results in the transmission from one person to the other of tens of billions of um, uh, 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 chemicals and uh, you know sort of bacteria and all sorts of other things that that, that belong to your insides um, to the other person and it's giving them a very direct measure of the quality of your immune system so if you think about falling in love courtship in other words as a process of assessment so it starts since you enter the room and your eyes lock across the room and you go oh that's a very attractive one that's uh, fills, ticks all those kind of physical attraction boxes. I, I shall go and explore further and you go closer and engage in conversation. And, uh, and uh, so then you're picking up all sorts of cues about you know, their back, cultural background, if you like, the, how they think and psychological background in, in the conversation. And then if you're, sti if you're still happy, I mean, th at that point, you kind of go through a, a point of reappraisal. Do I like what I see or do I pull out now? Well, I, I still can, or do I go to the next level? You go to the next level is a bit more sort of physical, so you 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 have a grapple and a dance, um, and at this point you can you can get a good sniff of the other person, uh, smell uh, what they're sniffing. Smelling important in humans. Very important, very important, because again, the same genes that determine your smell are the ones that determine your um, immune system. Right. And what you're looking for is somebody who has a different immune system. It seems that what, what you're looking for is somebody who kind of looks like you in all sorts of ways. So it's keeping a good bunch of genes together from your extended family, if you like. This is what's known as optimal inbreeding or optimal outbreeding. You know, you, you know, why would you waste the fact that history of mating in your ancestors produce this perfect person that is you why would you waste all that by dispersing it by marrying uh, or mating with people who are uh, not so perfect as you right so the answer is you look for people who are similar to you facially and all these kind of things uh, look like you as much as possible because that's indicative of the fact that you uh, probably have a common ancestry. Um, and of course, in village societies, that would work really well. And it probably doesn't work so well for us because we don't actually meet people who really look like us very often these days. But in village society, you know, you can tell, tell it our village from that village. They just look different. <laughs> um, uh, 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 and that's not just how they cut, comb their hair <laughs> physically. Did I see um, that you said that men can actually smell when women are ovulating? Yes, yes. Um, so, so th this is the point that, well, uh, we can come back to, I was just, yes. just finished the, the mate choice bit is that the one thing you aren't looking for somebody to be similar to you is in the immune system, because what you want is your child to have as diverse a, a, an immune system as possible. You did the, the narrower it is. So inbreeding is bad for all sorts of reasons, but one of them is you end up with no variability in their immune system to resist diseases. When you say immune system, what do you mean? It, it, the body's natural immune system. This is what produces all the white blood cells and stuff that, that sort of attack and cannibalize. Okay, and, and genetically, viruses and genetically, people have a predisposition to be what robust against certain types of uh, 
viruses and, and bacteria, but maybe not all of them. So the goal is to kind of spread the risk across. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Or, or, or it's it's it, it not necessarily particular resistance, particular bacteria or what have you, but a, a very strong immune system, which is because the immune system is very adaptive to what's thrown at it. Right. It it learns uh, to recognize. Uh, foreign bodies that have invaded you. And, Ooh, so and this isn't just genetic. This is something which is going to be influenced by if you were an adventurer, if you'd been away. No, if you'd... no it's it's the it's the genetics of the immune system itself. This capacity for the white, essentially the white blood cells uh, to identify and the natural killer cells, the NK cells, uh, to identify foreign bodies in your system and seek and destroy, as it were, and. Uh, you know what you I mean the, there will be an element probably from different exposures in terms of lineages uh, that have you know sort of produced some genetic adaptation to particular kinds of viruses maybe but the essence of it is you want as much diversity as you can get there and that s smelling somebody is as the sort of semi distance cue is the best way to find that out. And, and you know, the, the famous cases are Eskimos and Maoris rubbing noses, and we all think they're rubbing noses. They're not. <laughs> what they do is they put their noses side by side and they sniff and take in a deep breath. And it's called, uh, I forget the term, uh, use uh, the, how it's translated, but essentially it's breathing in the spirit. Is that the equivalent of the European air kiss on both yes, peaks? Yes, yes, exactly the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why people pick babies up and sniff them. If you've ever watched newborn babies when they're being sort of passed around, everybody goes, holds them up. That's a big goes, whiff of the baby. And pretends not to be sniffing, but they sniff. There is no question of that. <laughs> so... Um, and, and you know, we get a lot of cues from uh, much more cues from smell than we really like to think. I and mean, we're we're actually quite good. I mean, mothers can tell uh, their offspring from other people's offspring by their smell alone. Um, uh, the, and the, the 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 big issue uh, um, really in this context is perfume, right? Perfume billions of dollars are spent every year on perfume billions of dollars and everybody thinks it's to cover up your natural bad odors and it's not you what you're doing is you buy perfume that exaggerates your natural your personal natural odors that's why there are so many different perfumes it was just covering it up we just have one perfume and everybody you know, it's like old spice after shave, <laughs> just gets loaded on. <laughs> no, not 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 with women. Uh, it's very carefully chosen to, uh, and that this is kind of how they build up these perfumes. Is you know, so they kind of match uh, different um, uh, smell characteristics, as it were. Their sniffers are extremely good at. at decomposing the smells in, in different perfume mixes um the, the the people that do it for them um but what it's doing is actually exaggerating your natural smell of course it helps to cover up some of the bits you don't want to 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 to, to smell of but but it, it, it's actually you know really part and parcel of, of the and that you know courtship strategy and that's why it's be, 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 been you know since time immemorial um, women in particular have done that <clears throat> or used it. And not to say that men also don't, but it's much, much more important uh, in, in the case of women. But your final, so you've had a good sniff while you're sort of grabbing the girl in, in a waltz or something like that, or pretending to dance very close in, in, in the club. Um, but the final uh, point really is comes with kissing because that actually is direct. Uh, experience of of um, in saliva. Saliva is just full of uh, um, you know sort of immune system stuff as well as digestive stuff. So it's it gives you a really uh, clear uh, message as it was the best you could do. But that's your final because that's invasive. That's obviously the final step in it. So courtship is like this series of steps, starting way out 
the distance cues, which are largely visual, getting closer and closer and closer into, literally into taste at the end. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.